In this video, we'll talk about pseudogenes. Pseudogenes are non-functional segment of DNA that resembles functional genes. So here we have a protein coding gene A and on the right hand side we have a pseudogene for protein coding gene A. So pseudogene has a lot of sequence similarities with the protein coding gene. However, there are some differences. So pseudogenes are usually identified when genome sequence analysis finds gene-like sequences that lack regulatory elements. So if you notice here, the pseudogene of gene A doesn't have the regulatory promoter element with it. So most likely it's a pseudogene. Most non-bacterial genomes contain many pseudogenes and they are as many as the functional protein coding genes. Question is, what are their functions? Are they evolutionary relics, their consequence of an accident or they have defined functions? Various biological processes are expected to create pseudogenes. For example, retrotransposition. Now there, ex there exists no specialized mechanism by which these kind of like pseudogenes can be removed from the genome. Pseudogene was first discovered by Jack et al. in 1977 from Xenopus. In the Xenopus, the 5S ribosomal RNA gene has a pseudogene and this particular pseudogene was identified by Jack et al. They didn't know at that point of time that what was the function of this gene. These days, it is involved in immune function, it is annotated. But that time, they didn't identify a function of this gene and that's why they thought, okay, pseudogenes are kind of genes which has a structural similarities with a normal gene, but they are functionless. So kind of they are evolutionary relics. Okay, there are different kinds of pseudogenes, but question is what are the factors that can distinguish them from a protein coding gene? There could be absence of introns, the lack of regulatory sequences like promoter elements, and the occurrence of truncations or disruptions of open reading frame due to mutations are predominant feature of pseudogenes. Now, GenCode uh, consortia had named specific genes as pseudogenes and annotated them throughout the human genome. It turns out human gene has a genome has almost like 10,000 or more pseudogenes. That's a lot. Let's talk about the types of pseudogene. There are two types of pseudogene, processed pseudogene and unprocessed pseudogene. Processed pseudogene are consequence of retrotransposition, where the RNA of a particular gene is transcribed and later on the cDNA corresponding to this RNA is now incorporated into a new location, which has created the pseudogene, but it lacks the promoter elements because the mRNA won't have the promoter, right? Now the unprocessed pseudogene also might have promoters, but they are as a they are, they are occur due to a result of duplication. So they accumulate mutations in their reading frame. So they might not produce functional protein or might produce a protein which are having different function. So let's talk about the functional aspects of pseudogene. Though initially pseudogenes were thought to be non-functional and they are just a, a outcome of some accident. It's not true. Pseudogene perform many function. Pseudogene could be a source for long non-coding RNA. Pseudogene could regulate uh, gene expression. It can repress. It is known to repress many genes in the genome. So it's it is having a cis regulatory element like function. Also, it can interfere with parent mRNA. That means you know if the particular pseudogene is transcribed in the reverse direction. So basically the antisense strand is now transcribed. So the sense and antisense strand can hybridize with each other, which would sequester the normal mRNA of that particular gene and prevents translation. So overall translation rate would be impeded by the presence of the pseudogene. So these are few identified function of pseudogene and active research is going on to identify many more new functions. But there are a lot of difficulties in terms of studying pseudogenes. Think about microarray. So a particular gene X and the pseudogene of that particular uh, gene would have sequence similarities. That means if we use a specific probe to identify these genes, the pseudogene would also get hybridized. 
so it is really hard to discriminate between the gene and the pseudo gene not possible with micro array then there is short read rna sequencing in the short read rna sequencing as well due to the problem in terms of base pair resolution one can't find out that what are the differences in terms of uh, base pairs in a short read so these are fragments so if we look at the fragments a gene fragment versus a pseudo gene fragment would pretty much look like the same so that is why it's really difficult to identify with them in rna sequencing as well because rna for both gene x and pseudo gene x would have a lot of similarities and very little differences between them maybe the differences are in order of base pairs it's also difficult to knock down pseudo genes if you want to understand what is the function of pseudo gene you have to knock out or knock down them so if you design a siRNA complex to target the pseudo gene you would also non specifically target the gene corresponding to that pseudo gene so off targeting would be a huge issue and you cannot determine what is the function of the pseudo gene these days crispr cas9 based technique is bit better to study pseudo genes and their function i hope this video was informative if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and please share my videos with your friends support our channel using super thanks see you in next video